How's it going, fellow Detroit Red Wings fans? So, we talked about the upcoming trade deadline earlier this week. Now, let's talk about a prospect. One that is very fascinating because we are just unsure of how he's going to turn out. Sometimes he looks like he will be the offensive driver of an insanely strong defensive top line with Cider. And sometimes it looks like maybe a top four defenseman on a good team. But we all know it'll take time before we get an answer. That's how it goes for all prospects. But regardless, let's talk about Simon Edvidson. Now probably the biggest tease of this season so far had to be the World Junior Championships. For those who don't know, we had a number of great prospects playing on a number of different countries and they all went to the World Juniors, but it was shut down due to COVID after only a couple of games. So some players got to play a couple of games while others got one or sometimes none. Well, regardless, Edvinson was one of those prospects who went and got to play. It was only for a few games before it was shut down, but he two assists for three points in two games played and actually tied for first in points on a team that included Eklund, Nederbeck, and Alexander Holtz. And keep in mind, as a defenseman in his first World Juniors, he will have another opportunity next year, assuming he and the Red Wings choose for him to go and thinks it's best for his development. Now, before we get too far into today's video, I want to give a shout out to Rocky Kruger. We hit the 1,000 subscriber mark a little bit ago and want to start thanking you guys for making the Red Wing Nation community a community. So if you want to get a shout out, make sure you subscribe and join lots of other great fans of this team and sport. So we are here to figure out one thing. Is Edvinson the next quote unquote cider? As in, is he the next great defenseman to come up through the ranks in Detroit and hopefully allow our power play to dominate and for our blue line to be as feared as it once was a decade or so ago? So let's look at stats. Right now, Edmondson is in his draft plus one season. At that same point in Sider's career, he was playing with the Griffins in Grand Rapids, where he recorded 22 points through 49 games played in the AHL. So it's important to remember People didn't think he would be as capable offensively as he is right now. Now, Evanson currently has 12 points in 26 games played with Forlunda in the SHL. He is actually recovering from a minor injury, but he normally plays 18 plus minutes a night for Forlunda. Evanson's 12 points in 26 games played puts him a top U20 defenseman in terms of points per game and have played more than a handful of games. And keep this in mind, Edmondson is not a U20 defenseman, he's a U19 defenseman. Compared to his actual age group, he leads all U19 defensemen and players by a large margin. So his stats are actually great for his age. And in terms of comparing stats, his .461 points per game average compared to Sider's .448 points per game average in Grand Rapids is actually slightly better. So, okay, stat-wise, he's pretty close to following his track record. But what about mentally? And this is something I'm just starting to notice with Red Wings prospects in general. So last season, Sider was dominating the SHL with Rogla and was available to play in the World Junior Championships, even with all of the COVID craziness. Now, I would say close to any player would be honored and want to leave any team for a chance to represent your country. But Sider decided he wanted to stay with Rogla and continue his development, which I do think is better for his development and was a better decision for his development, rather than taking a month off to play with younger players for a chance at a World Junior Championship medal. It was also the same thing Raymond chose earlier this season. Albeit it was a little bit different, but during the season, Raymond was considered to be able to play for Team Sweden at the World Juniors but elected to stay with Detroit. And well, Edmonton kinda had that same decision, albeit on a much bigger stage. The NHL has decided to not allow their players to go to the Olympics. Whether or not you agree with it is your choice and has nothing to do with this video. But regardless, it allows for players that normally wouldn't be considered to be on the Olympic squad. And while there's some thoughts of Edmonton possibly joining them, and well, he has said no to the Olympics. 
Now, it may be for more reasons than just to focus on his development, including trying to give his team the best chance to make it far into the playoffs and maybe win a championship. Either way, that is a decision you want to see your players making when it comes to the NHL and trying to chase down the Stanley Cup. If a player is willing to give up the World Juniors and or the Olympics to make his team more competitive, that is a big deal heading into the later part of the season and into the playoffs. Regardless, Edvidson and his hype train are heating up, and next season will be a big test to see what he can do. I would assume he signs his entry-level contract at the end of the season, but I'm not entirely sure if he will be a Red Wing next season. I definitely think he has the skill, but Eisenman may elect for him to take another season to develop his incredibly high offensive skill set while also locking down his defensive skill set, maybe with Grand Rapids, where they can keep an eye on him and call him up later in the season or with his team in Frolunda. What do you think of Edmonton? Let us know down below. Red Wing Nation was designed to be a community of Red Wings fans that can come together and talk about all things Red Wings. If you like this video, make sure you drop a like. That way we make more content that you like. And lastly, if you are a Red Wings fan, if you are a hockey fan, if you're just a great person, make sure you subscribe and join lots of other great fans of this team and sport. And until next time, lights out in the red light district.